Yes, thanks for joining me once again here on Classic Dirt Bike TV and uh, of course welcome back to our continuing coverage of the 2023 Telford Classic Dirt Bike Show. And I do hope you've enjoyed all of the previous eight episodes that we've uh, brought you from uh, this year's Telford event. And of course this is the last and the final clip that we're going to feature here in this video. So without any further delay, let's jump straight into the video and take a look at our next machine. And so to get this uh, final episode from Telford 2023 underway, we're going to start by taking a look at another nice bike that was uh, sitting on the full Denton engineering stand. And uh, this lovely 250 Honda Red Rocket is uh, another bike that was built by Steve Denton and his crew. And uh, once more, this old twin shocker here is uh, bristling with some very nice uh, trick parts, uh, mostly manufactured by PDE themselves. Now, Phil Denton Engineering are yet another uh, UK-based company that specialise in the restoration and the manufacture of parts for these red rockets and a few other uh, Evolution Honda models as well. So once again, these are a, another good uh, port of call if you need uh, any parts or engine services for your old uh, Honda dirt bikes. And almost straight away you can see that this 250 Honda motor has been given the full uh, refurb treatment by PDE and it's been uh, finished off by fitting this very high quality fresco expansion chamber which uh, thankfully they've left uh, unpainted. But more uh, quality components on our Denton Red Rocket with these uh, top of the range uh, Olin's uh, piggyback suspension units which certainly need uh, no commentary on their performance and reliability because uh, these are some of the best suspension systems that you can get for these old twin shockers. But also on this uh, red rocket there are other uh, bespoke parts like this uh, Cerakote alloy brake uh, torque arm which I'm pretty sure is another component from the Phil Denton workshop and of course an upgrade to the Honda original. Now the bike swing arm once again I'm sure is an upgraded replacement part for what uh, would have been the steel original from the late uh, 1970s. And uh, also these top and bottom triple clamps are more of the parts engineered by the Denton CNC machine which as you can see are uh, made from alloy and are certainly of uh, top quality as well. Now alongside the bike uh, the guys at PDE also had samples of the parts that they make for these bikes like these uh, clutch baskets and other internals uh, for these Honda two-stroke uh, motors and uh, also on display in this glass case we had parts like ignition covers, uh, suspension linkages, clutch baskets and alloy carburetor manifolds and other uh, bits and pieces which again are all top quality and made uh, from the finest materials. But as you can see uh, a vast array of Honda dirt bike parts with uh, handlebar mounts, uh, top and bottom triple clamps and even uh, quite rare parts like uh, new front and rear uh, wheel spindles. Although one of the upgrades that the guys at PDE make for these red rockets is this uh, new style uh, clutch casing which uh, has a removable uh, side cover so you don't have to take the entire clutch cover off the engine to do uh, maintenance uh, or other servicing work uh, on the clutch. But as I said, PDE Engineering are another excellent name and uh, number to keep handy in case you need parts or services for your old Honda dirt bike racers. Although just before we get back to looking at the bikes uh, once again, uh, Peter Gerrard uh, had this uh, brand new gear shift mechanism on display which is basically a new type of gear shifter linkage for the old Czechoslovakian 
CZ bikes and uh, this one here is uh, for an old CZ uh, twin porter. But essentially what this system does is that it virtually eliminates the long throw that's normally associated with these CZ gearboxes and after bolting on this new conversion it makes the gearbox uh, shift as good as any Japanese bike and some even say that it's actually uh, better but uh, I do know a few riders who currently use these upgraded parts on their own CZ bikes and they did say that the difference that these parts make is quite substantial and you certainly no longer have to lift your foot clean off the pegs to shift uh, between the gears. Now in this shot here you can see Peter demonstrating his brand new system to a customer but uh, if you do need any further information on these parts it's probably best to just give him a call on this number if you have any queries as to what models they fit and their prices. But as we moved around the halls of the Telford show, uh, this bike uh, once again was an interesting machine. Uh, naturally, it's a sort of a grass track and speedway type uh, machine, but this time powered by a Spanish Boltaco uh, two-stroke uh, motor. Now, for me personally, uh, grass track bikes are not exactly my first love, but uh, looking at the workmanship on this bike, there's certainly no denying the engineering that's gone into putting it uh, all together. Now, obviously, uh, this uh, grass track or speedway bike is powered by a Boltaco motor, uh, probably uh, a 360 or maybe even a 370 engine uh, with that uh, quite substantial air filter and an old ammo concentric carburetor to feed it with its fuel. Now I certainly did see some Antig badges on the fuel tank and chassis which uh, makes me think that this could be an old uh, 1960s Antig frame from that era who were uh, renowned for using these Boltaco and the British made Jap engines in these uh, Antig chassis. And it also appears that this uh, bike even has its uh, period correct British made girling shocks on the rear which again uh, were your standard dampers on most British manufactured bikes uh, of that period. Now the bike's even kept its uh, stock Boltaco exhaust pipe, although uh, naturally this has been modified to fit uh, this grass track frame and uh, not the original uh, motocross bike it was probably uh, been intended for. But nevertheless, a nicely uh, prepared and restored old flat tracker and uh, certainly something different from the mountains of classic scrambles bikes that were dotted around the halls. But this was another old rare bike that I spotted among the hundreds of European machines on display and this is an old Italian uh, Moto Guzzi four stroker which I'm sure was called a Stornello and uh, from what I can remember on the day it was a single cylinder 125 four stroke motor that uh, powered it. But again, I never managed to grab any information on the bike on the day of the show, but I expect that it's a mid-1960s machine or thereabouts, but it's certainly another interesting motorcycle made up in this street scrambler type of configuration with the usual lighting kit and speedometer for the road. And uh, this little Moto Guzzi and a few other uh, rare Italian stallions like uh, Benelli's and a few others were sitting here on the Italian uh, Motorcycle Owners uh, Club stand. But it certainly would have been uh, great to uh, cover each and every bike that adorned Telford 2023, but to be fair, there were just far too many bikes uh, to make that uh, possible. But uh, this again was another very nice uh, little machine, this little uh, Moto Guzzi. And so continuing our theme of old classics, this next bike here is a 1960 
Cotton ISTD Special, which is powered uh, by a twin cylinder 250 Villiers two stroke uh, motor. Now, the story that accompanied this bike was that uh, this machine was a project between the Cotton uh, Motorcycle Company and three army riders who together uh, built three of these bikes uh, specifically to take part in the 35th International Six Days Trial race event that was held at Bad Aussie in Austria on the 19th to the 24th of September in 1960. So it's said that the three riders who were uh, Terry Owen, uh, Gordon Coppock and Roy Barnes uh, all finished their event on these Cotton Villiers bikes with uh, Gordon taking a silver medal while Terry and Roy settled uh, for a bronze. And so what we're looking at here is uh, one of those three bikes and uh, this one here is the actual machine that was ridden by Gordon uh, Kopak who uh, took that silver medal. But the bike has been rebuilt since its uh, ISTD success in 1960 with uh, mostly uh, all of the correct period parts being used but it uh, does have a few little upgrades on it to make it a bit more user friendly in these uh, modern times because this example is certainly no museum piece as it is still in regular use but uh, the bike is the original that was written by Gordon and it still has the original uh, registration and competition numbers. And so as we move on to the bike's 250 Villiers engine uh, which, to be fair, uh, I don't know too much about because it's not uh, an engine that I'm too familiar with, but uh, certainly it is a twin-cylinder affair fed by a single uh, carburetor with a double-branch inlet to feed both of those cylinders. Now, correct me if I'm wrong here, but uh, as I remember, I think these Villiers twin-cylinder motors, I'm sure, had uh, two separate crankshafts, uh, one for each uh, cylinder, but uh, unmistakably uh, 1960s uh, Villiers engineering with these old school uh, wire gauze type air filters that you simply uh, took out and cleaned them with petrol before putting them back inside uh, their little uh, alloy canister. But as we move on to the clutch and gearbox side, now, uh, I haven't a clue as to how many gears would have been inside this engine. Uh, more than likely, it probably would have been about three or possibly even uh, four gears. But uh, again, as far as maintenance goes, uh, there wasn't much that was really complicated about these British-made Villiers engines as they were uh, relatively easy enough uh, to work on and uh, generally uh, reliable as well. Now the exhaust uh, system that was bolted onto our Villiers engine was certainly uh, a bit radical with these twin header pipes here at the front uh, that were then uh, fixed on to those uh, chopper style upswept exhaust tailpipes that were fitted onto each side uh, of the bike. Now again, I expect that uh, this was a custom design that was uh, purely to keep the pipes as far as possible away from any obstacles that would otherwise cause damage to them. But then again, you'd think that maybe a two into one pipe it would have been a much better option to choose, but more importantly, it would have gone a long way to reducing the overall weight of this bike. But these upswept exhaust pipes were certainly radical for its time, but they certainly gave the bike a little uh, bit of style. And so as we uh, move on to the bike's uh, front end, we had these uh, leading link kind of suspension systems, which uh, once more were quite typical of many of these uh, early uh, British made uh, bikes of the 1960s. And uh, for a front brake, it was also a relatively small, old-style drum 
that we had here uh, on the front end, which no matter how hard you pulled on that front brake lever, it would still not make this bike uh, stand on its head. But uh, as I keep saying, uh, this was the motorcycle braking technology uh, of its day. So at the uh, back of our ISTD bike in the early 1960s, it would uh, more than likely have been a very so small pair of girdling dampers that would have been used on these old uh, competition machines. But our old uh, cotton villiers still appears to have its uh, period correct bars and switches and uh, those ball end steel levers uh, which were all parts from that golden era of British uh, competition uh, motorcycles of that period. But this machine here for uh, sure certainly has a little bit of history surrounding it with its success in that 1960 ISTD event in Austria and not only is this example here uh, worthy of its place in any motorcycle museum uh, this bike continues uh, to be kept in good working condition to enable it to take to the track or to the road uh, whenever it's required. Now of course we can't uh, walk around the halls of the Telford show without mentioning the pre-65 motocross club who are usually uh, the mainstay and uh, organisers of most of the vintage uh, scrambles and sidecar race events that's uh, taken place in the east of England uh, and again uh, the club brought along quite a few examples of the bikes uh, that uh, take part in their race meetings all again uh, tightly packed together with a nice uh, Rickman Triumph there uh, front and centre and uh, that number 166 bike there uh, certainly looks like another one of those uh, rare Rintut Wasp machines that looks like it's uh, being powered by a big matchless or similar uh, four-stroke engine. But another uh, nice Rickman frame Triumph Twin here, which are of course the bread and butter of pre-65 or pre-68 uh, racing. Uh, Rickman frames, of course, with various types of power plants inside them, like uh, BACs and uh, Jawas. Now, although these old timers look a bit heavy and unwielding, uh, these are still highly competitive and very quick bikes uh, on the racetracks. And uh, if it's grunt and power that you're after, then these big 650 Triumph Twins certainly tick all of those uh, boxes. But if you need any further information on the club or its events, then uh, just have a look at their website at this address and you're sure to find everything that you uh, need to know. So unfortunately, the last and final bike that we're going to feature from the Telford Classic Dirt Bike Show 2023 is this uh, quite nice looking old matchless uh, thumper, which I uh, spotted sitting alongside a host of other old vintage bikes in one of the small halls uh, at the show. Now, once again, there was no information displayed alongside the bike, which uh, was a bit unfortunate for me, but uh, I expect that uh, all of you matchless experts out there will already know exactly uh, what you're looking at and will be shouting at their screens. But uh, I'm thinking that uh, our featured bike here is from around the early uh, 1960s, maybe even the late uh, 1950s, but without any background on what I'm actually looking at. It's another assumption on my part. Although essentially uh, the motor is a big single cylinder uh, matchless uh, pre-unit type of four-stroke uh, engine, in fact, I think it may be even be one of those uh, G80CS engines because I have come across uh, a couple of those uh, matchless engines before. But uh, without doubt, it's a big uh, brute of an engine that I think uh, had a dry clutch and the oil storage tank was that uh, small uh, alloy box that you can see there just behind the cylinder. Now again, I'm almost certain that this is a Norton AMC gearbox, which 
uh, were used on many of these old school scramblers back in the 1950s and 60s and uh, as I recall these were quite robust and uh, reliable. But these big matchless motors were long strokers and uh, quite torquey as you'd expect which uh, made them ideal for use as a scrambles uh, power plant. Now the sparks for the motors ignition uh, were all supplied by this uh, gold coloured uh, magneto unit which was placed here at the front uh, of the engine which uh, once again is uh, old school engineering for these big four strokers but uh, as I just said uh, I'm pretty sure that it was a dry clutch that was housed uh, behind this black cover which was usually uh, connected onto the crankshaft by way of a primary chain. Now our old uh, matchless frame is uh, once again been fitted with a set of upgraded uh, wide foot pegs rather than of course those narrow ones that would have been fitted uh, back in the day. And so at the front end of our old matchless uh, these forks were uh, pretty basic for their time and uh, once more I'm not uh, sure as to their make or even origins but uh, they certainly look like they could be a pair of old uh, BSA uh, forks but uh, no need to guess uh, with regards uh, this front hub and brake which is unmistakably a genuine matchless unit as these hubs uh, are used on many different makes and models of old uh, British built bikes. And again, the rear hub and brake is uh, once more another matchless part with uh, both of these hubs uh, made from lightweight uh, aluminium. But in terms of their stopping power, uh, both front and rear brakes were still uh, good enough to slow up our quite heavy matchless, but uh, naturally uh, these brakes weren't as good as our modern day hydraulic uh, disc units that are found on today's uh, modern bikes. Now no plastic or fiberglass on these bikes as this uh, was vintage old school at its very best, all built from steel and alloy and uh, this fuel tank in particular uh, was handcrafted in aluminium with that nice uh, maroon colour and of course the flying matchless winged emblem on the side there complete as well with its racing scars and that uh, Monza style fuel cap sitting there uh, on the top. But as we move on to the rear end of our big matchless uh, as you'd expect a bike uh, of this kind of vintage is uh, never going to still have its old original suspension units on the back which uh, at that time would probably have been an old set of uh, simple girling dampers and uh, as you can see our owner here has opted uh, for a pair of classic but modern style uh, Hagen shocks here on the back which are a world apart from those old school uh, girlings. Although I certainly uh, think that this seat has been custom made to suit uh, the rider's own riding style and personal preferences while he's competing on the bike on the track because uh, it without question is different from those uh, completely flat seats that you normally have on these old bikes but uh, that's a great thing about vintage racing in that you can uh, set the bike up to your own parameters and personal uh, styling. But almost every single part on this bike just uh, screams old school uh, from the bike steel frame to that big long stroking matchless four stroke motor and of course these vintage uh, motorcycle uh, controls. And almost straight away you can see the signs of its uh, battle scars from its track duels with other old classics but uh, even although this bike uh, here uh, was on display at Telford 2023. I can almost guarantee that it was back racing on the track 
uh, the following uh, weekend. But without doubt, a superb British classic and, of course, a fitting conclusion uh, to our coverage of the 2023 Telford Classic Dirt Bike Show. And so there you have it. I do hope you've enjoyed all of the footage from uh, Telford this year and, of course, the nine episodes that we've uh, brought you, which has to be said, were really uh, just a sample of the hundreds of bikes that were viewed over the course of that weekend. But CDB TV is already looking forward to 2024, when we hope that you'll all join us to see even more classics next year.